Uh, today I will present our recent work uh, uh, in Basel, and uh, uh, so our my, my topic today is regulation of cardio my office in Basel by Alcat One. So what is Alcat One? I think all of you know, know uh, the gene toxin. It is the superstar here, and uh, but. Uh, uh, Tafsin's mutation will cause spastatum. And uh, uh, what, what is Alcat-1? Alcat-1 is the ASOCOA lysocalylipine ASO transferase 1, and it was first cloned by our lab. And from the, uh, it is a, another kind of uh, calylipine remodeling enzyme. From the, from the loud and blood data, we, we can see that Alcat-1's expression is uh, uh, mo uh, expressed uh, mostly in the metabolic tissues, especially in the heart. This gives us uh, some clue that alkyl one might regulate the basal metabolic rate in the, in the body. And we know calilipin has, has four aso, uh, fatty aso chains. Usually in many uh, animal tissues, the four aso chains are lyloric acid. And uh, under oxidative stress, or uh, calilipin will oxidized by uh, by the free uh, radicals and to form monolysis of calilipin. And the uh, monolysis calilipin will go through into the the modeling pathway, and it will be modeled by tafsin or alkyl one. Tafsin uh, usually will know that it will use uh, uh, lyloric acid as the aso dollar to uh, form the uh, cardiolipin, which is good. But alkyl one, it, our risk, our price data shows that it will uh, use a, a large range of uh, uh, asos to form cardiolipin, but it, it is preferred to use the polyunsaturated, uh, uh, polyunsaturated uh, aso chains to form from cardiolipin. And this polyunsaturated SO chain will make this molecular unstable. This, un this un uh, unstability will uh, increase the uh, oxidative stress and uh, cause the mitochondrial dysfunction. So uh, in almost all uh, aging-related diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. The common defect in, this, in all of these diseases are increased uh, loss production, mitochondrial dysfunction, and the pathological cardiolipin remodeling. So in this common defect, alkyl one plays a very important role in, in these processes. Why we see that? Because we have a lot of data to, to improve, the, in, to, to uh, confirm this. And uh, we see first that uh, in, in these diseases, uh, alkyl one's uh, expression and activity are induced uh, in obesity, diabetes, and cardiomyopathy uh, in, in some metabolic tissues such as liver, heart, and muscle. And its expression uh, was also uh, induced by oxidative stress. So we generated uh, uh, alkyl-1 overexpression C2C12 cells, and uh, we, we, we did the lipidomical analysis, and we found that in the alkyl-1 overexpression C2C12 cells, the total calorilipin content and as well as the uh, lyloric acid content was decreased. Well, the uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid uh, SO chain content was increased in the overexpansion cells. Well, we also generated the uh, alkyl one knockout mass, and in this mass heart, they only changed the uh, uh, cardiolipin molecular species are the tetralyloric cardiolipin and its content was increased. As we know, in bacidum patient or uh, tafsin uh, lockdown mouse mouse heart and mouse muscle, uh, the 
total color lipin was decreased and the molar length of color lipin was increased. Well, the, uh, the fatty acid chain changed was uh, the, the titolanolic fatty acid and, and uh, its content was decreased in, in the mouse, and mouse, mouse heart and muscle. So, so uh, combine this data and uh, we have uh, other more to show that in our, in our alkyl one uh, overexpression cell lines, the uh, MLCL80, it is another cardiolipin modeling enzyme. Its expression was uh, downregulated in the alkyl one overexpression cell line. Well, in the alkyl one knockout, knockout mouse, mouse heart, uh, the MLCL80 and the tafrin expression was induced in, in this. In, in the heart. So our first, um, uh, first question is that if we look, look, look down or look out, look, mm, inhabit alkyl one's expression and activity, it will, it, it will, uh, can, it, can it be rescued the toxin lockdown or deficiency induced cost uh, uh, cardiolipin uh, defect. So this is our first uh, uh, question. And uh, on the other hand, we, we, we found that in, the, in our overexpressed uh, cell line, the hydrogen peroxide uh, production rate was in, induced in, in, in the cell line. Uh, so the alkyl ones overexpression will in, in, uh, increase the oxidative stress. And uh, we also uh, found that uh, in our hydrophobic hy 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 cardiomyopathy model of mouse, which was uh, induced by cerebral uh, hormone T4, and we found that in the wild type mice, the T4 will induce the alkyl one's expression, and it will um, dilate the cardiomyocyte, and uh, of course, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But in the lockout mouse, the, the, this, the, this field type was gone, and the cardiomyocyte size are much smaller in the lockout mouse model. So uh, how this happens? So we measured the uh, ox oxidative stress level in the, in the mouse heart, and we found that the T4 will induce the oxidative stress level. Uh, well, well, in the uh, knockout mass model, uh, they, they had oxidative stre stress level was much lower than the wild type mass. So, so thanks to other uh, scientists, other professors' work, thanks to uh, Dr. Uh, Greenberg's work, we, we know that in the East, loss of toxin will uh, increase the oxidative stress. And uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Poo's work, which was published uh, on nature medicine this year, and in the bacidomo IPSC derived cardiomyocytes, the oxidative, oxidative stress level are, are much higher than the wild type mass. So oxidative stress, uh, I think we think will play a very important role in the uh, bus syndrome. So this, uh, all of this uh, data and uh, our data and other scientists' data uh, promoted us to think about uh, the uh, collaborative role of sorry. So of alkyl one and toxin in the cardiolipin remodeling. We know that in the oxidative stress, the free radical will oxidize the cardiolipin, and the oxidized cardiolipin will go through into the uh, remodeling pathway. And uh, there had two where we uh, distinguished them to into two pathways. The first is the physiological pathway, which was calculated by T toxin or ML cell AT. It prefer to use the nanonic uh, SO uh, coa as the SO donor 
to form uh, catenation, which is good and will recover the mitochondrial function. Well, in the pathological pathway, our cattle prefer to use the polyunsaturated uh, fatty acid to form, as, we, as I mentioned, it will, milk, it will make the catenation unstable and increase the oxidative stress. So our hypothesis is that if we inhabit or uh, inhabit uh, or delete, uh, delete the uh, alkyl one, one, it can to, uh, will be like rescue the toxin deficiency caused uh, uh, defect. So we, we, we generated uh, a mouse model which was uh, uh, Crossbreed with our alkyl one, knockout mass, and uh, tafsin uh, SHR transgenic mass, and to form uh, alkyl one knockout mass and tafsin knockdown mass. We, we use thousand blood, uh, thousand blood to, to do the alkyl one genotype and PCR for the uh, tafsin genotype. And we feed this four groups of mouse with uh, doxycycline diet for. Uh, eight months, and uh, the doxycycline diet will uh, can efficiently uh, knock down the toxin expression in, in the heart, muscle, and liver, and many tissues. So we found that uh, toxin in the toxin lock, lock, lockdown mass, it, its body weight was uh, decreased than the wild type mass. Well. Uh, uh, the alkyl one knockout and toxin with toxin lockdown mass, it, it spot weight is the same one. The toxin single lockdown mass, but but uh, uh, we see here the uh, heart weight to body weight ratio in the toxin lockdown mass was uh, in increased in the toxin uh, lockdown mass, which means the which means the, the toxin lockdown will cause the uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But in the alkyl one lockout with in, in the toxin lockdown mass, it will rescue this defect. So this is what we found. And we, we did the echocardiography, and we found that the mouse heart uh, Diastonic IVS and uh, diastonic LVPW and uh, diastonic and systonic LPW was uh, increased in the um, toxin single lockdown mass, but, uh, but alkyl one uh, deletion will rescue this, this, this defect. And alkyl one deletion also restores uh, toxin lockdown in. Uh, caused uh, uh, left ventricular fractional shortening and uh, injection fraction defect. So we, we, we see from the histology, and uh, because in bus syndrome uh, patient, uh, the uh, left ventricular non-compaction non is, uh, is a very common defect in, in in the heart. So, and we, we also see in the uh, toxin lockdown mouse model, the cardiomyocytes are dilated and th they are not compact to each other very well. Well, in the alkyl one uh, lockout mouse model, we, we found that alkyl one lockout will partly rescue this, this defect. So, we also isolate the Heart mitochondria, heart mitochondria, and we, we saw that alkyl one deletion will rescue the toxin induced heart mitochondria respiration defect. And uh, just uh, as we men I mentioned before, in the toxin knockdown, uh, yeast or, or the uh, bus syndrome uh, IPIC drive to uh, cardiomyocyte. It, it's uh, the oxidative stress are very high. And also in, in our mouse model, the toxin lockdown will uh, increase the um, 
oxidative stress, uh, and uh, and uh, when we uh, knock out alkyl one, the oxidative oxidative stress are very lower. So that's why uh, alkyl one. I think we we think that's why alkyl one can rescue the defect caused by uh, tafsin deficiency. So until now. Uh, because this work are, are still ongoing, uh, this is just uh, so. Until now, we can conclude that alkyl one deficiency will migrate to the uh, the, the uh, left of a tracheal lung compaction, this heart dysfunction caused by tough tough de deficiency, and alkyl one deficiency decreased the oxidative stress level in the tough thin lockdown mass heart. So our finding suggests that inhibiting alkyl one's activity may be our, uh, maybe give, provide us our treatment for the cardiomyopathy in bus syndrome. So this is our lab, uh, Dr. Shi's lab. And uh, Xiaolin Liu, uh, who is a postdoctor in our lab, uh, did the echography uh, and the poll who is a PhD student, uh, also involved in some of this work. And we also want to thank, thank our coll collaborators, especially Sh Dr. Shanning Han uh, for the epidemic analysis, Dr. Grant Hedge for providing us for some plasmid, and Dr. Uh, Steve Knippel for, for the Tafsin antibody. So thank you very much. Thank you for this very interesting talk and for saving the day time-wise. Um, any questions? Uh, thank you. Um, I was wondering what ages are mice you see this uh, uh, rescue effect of the uh, either uh, left ventricle non-compaction or uh, cardiomyopathy in, in forms of uh, you had a uh, not dilation, but hypertrophy, right? Yeah. So what ages are these uh, mice? Are these um, adults? Or? The, the ages of this mouse, you mean? Uh, we, we begin feed the mouse with the doxycycline diet at uh, one month old, and we feed them eight months, so they are nine months old. So they were induced after birth or before? Uh, after birth. So that, that's, of course, very interesting talk. I wanted to ask you, so LCAT uh, uses uh, SL-CoA's as uh, donors for yeah. uh, remodeling, which means, in contrast to TES, the fasin. So, which means, essentially, that your dietary manipulations will be maybe very successful without even deleting LCAT. So if you provide donors of uh, fatty acids that you like, like linoleic acid, you don't need to delete anything. What do you think about it? Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Can, I, can you say again? Uh, sorry. Very mean. <laughs> repeat your question. I also didn't get it. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe I didn't get it too. <laughs> <laughs> so in contrast to fasin, to, mm -hmm. to, to fasin, LCAT will use directly uh, acyl, uh, acyl yeah. uh, acid. So essentially this pathway, rescue or lack of rescue, will be dependent very much on the dietary con conditions. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's my point then. When you have these animals, do they, what if you restrict the amount of very polyunsaturated fatty acid residues? Uh, because we didn't uh, do the, we still not do the lipid atomical analysis until now, and we, we are planning to do this. So we will see if uh, our cut one deletion will rescue the tafsin lockdown uh, caused cardiolipin uh, phenotype. So. Sorry. Um, that was a very nice talk. Uh, I'm Bill Fu. I'm from Boston Children's. Um, 
Uh, I just had one technical point and then uh, the, the main question. So just the one point is when we say LV non-compaction, at least clinicians, they don't mean on a histological level. They mean a change in trabeculation, which is not what you're showing there. So just so we talk about the same thing, that's not really what we call LV non-compaction. Uh, but the, the more important point is, uh, since you guys are the experts of this enzyme, is there anything bad about inhibiting it or, or knocking it out? Or is it purely you know, something that could be targeted without a predicted bad consequence? Sorry, sorry my, my English is not very well, so can you? Is there anything you might guess would go bad by targeting this enzyme? By if you knock out the enzyme, the LCAT knock out oh, mouse, yeah. is it sick or healthy? Uh, it's very healthy. Healthy. Yeah, <laughs> and this mouse is very, very healthy than wild type mouse, and we, we already uh, did a lot of experiments on, on this mouse, especially uh, on many tissues, such as liver, heart, and, um, and the muscle, and the kidney. So the mouse are very healthy. Is it yeah. more healthy than the control mouse? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Colin Poon from NYU. Um, that was very interesting data. I had a couple of questions. Number one is, I don't recall that the previous studies in um, postnatal induction showed hypertrophy uh, from the Cincinnati or the Gainesville groups, and I was wondering if you could explain the discrepancy. Um, and number two, I was wondering about your conditions for echoing, because a fractional shortening of 70 or 80 percent, even in wild-type mice, is incredibly high under resting conditions. So I was wondering if, if you did something different when you were echoing these mice. So, so, so in, the, in this data, uh, we see here the fraction shortening and the injection short, uh, fraction was uh, for here. I I I, I was in, in the original reference is very lower, and in our, our mouse. So I, I don't know how to explain. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, Oh, yeah, we just use the uh, parameters from here and use, uh, use to calculate the, this, this uh, fraction shortening and injection fraction. Yeah. No, no, I understand how you got the numbers. I'm yeah. wondering what, what are your experimental conditions? Oh, how you, were the mice echoed? Uh, first, we, we isolate uh, uh, the mouse with uh, uh, palopapital or some kind of other uh, our drugs to make them sleep and then to do the echo cardiography. Do you use isopropanol? Uh, I don't remember the, 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 the drug's name because uh, this is did by our, one of my colleagues, which I mentioned in the, in the slides, that's uh, uh, Postal did that work. So I, I don't think they use the panel but it's another kind of drugs. I mean, Colin is raising a good point. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, if you induce anesthesia with a high dose of any induction drug, the ventricle is going to be empty, and as a result, your numbers will creep up. You know, that's basically basic physiology. So yeah. these things can, of course, play a role. Okay. Anybody else? I think we have time for one more talk, for one more question. So, Michael, this is just more in uh, comment to uh, Valerian's question uh, with regard to the molecular species of the, uh, of the cardiolipin. So there's been lots of studies in the animal, and this is old literature, where you feed animals different fatty acids and you can change the molecular composition of phospholipids, and cardiolipin is no exception. And if you feed lots of linoleic acid, they'll get a lot more linoleic acid in the cardiolipins. But the interesting thing in the patients anyway, the treatment, uh, you know, linoleic acid as a treatment is basically ineffective, right? In terms of uh, giving them a treatment. So that sort of makes uh, this idea of ALCAD being a very uh, a potential candidate for, uh, for the treatment, I would think. Yeah, more of a comment. I think so. It's very interesting and uh, of course we really don't understand why 
right? Uh, yeah, but but still, it is interesting. Yeah. yeah what do you think guys. about since we have Valerian here? What do you think about um, given the localization of LCAT? Could it have anything to do with the externalization of, of cardiolipin? Do you see any connection? Uh, until now, we didn't see any connection because uh, this work is uh, is is still going on, and we, we and we plan to do this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Um,